One, three, five, nine. Oh, I forgot about seven. Eh, you know we're doing another disappearing nine patch, so let's get started. Not bad. So this week it's spinach, kale, water, and orange. The orange flavor really comes through, but the green color, that's what really shows. So it doesn't taste too bad. So this week we continue on with their series of disappearing nine patch blocks. And last week we cut it both horizontally and vertically right down the center. Well, this week we're gonna cut it a little bit differently. So let's take a look at the fabric requirements to make this week's disappearing nine patch block. So to make this week's block, again, we're gonna be using three inch squares. Now I got five three inch squares of print fabrics and four three inch squares of this background in which case I'm just using this white or white reading fabric. To start off with this block, we're gonna make, again, a nine patch. I'm gonna lay out my fabrics as such. Uh, let's see, I'll put this one there. And I'm gonna put the prints in the corners. So I'm putting the prints in the corners here and then as well as in the center. And then these background fabrics, I'm just gonna to use to fill in there. Okay. Now last week, again, we cut it both vertically and horizontally right down the center. This time we're gonna cut it a little bit differently. So, but first let's get making our nine patch block. So I'm going to press to the print fabrics. So I'm just finger pressing this now. Okay. Then we're going to sew this last column on. So we'll take this. Okay. So I chain stitched all of my pieces down. I believe this was the top, yep. And again, we're gonna finger press towards the print fabrics. Where's Woody? So I kind of did a chain stitching and I didn't cut the thread in between. So it kind of keeps the block all together. Um, this technique of chain stitching is actually what people call webbing. Okay, so now we're gonna Put the block, sew the blocks together. We can nest our seams. Okay, let's see how we did. Not bad. Not bad there. Okay, turn that around. Right. let's see how we did. Okay, that one's a little off, but I'm not gonna sweat that because we're gonna be cutting this up anyway. So let's get this block all pressed and nice and flat. 
and then we'll start cutting it up. Mm. Mm. You know, this combination is actually pretty good. Mm. You know, I was kind of thinking the other day, my first quilt was actually a disappearing nine patch. It was the, it, it well, I shouldn't say it was because it is, it's the ugliest thing in the world. But you know what? No matter how ugly it is, I still love it. And I still actually have it. So yeah, I'll put a picture of it somewhere in this video here. Everything that you're not supposed to do in quilting, I pretty much did on that quilt. I mean, I ironed polyester batting and it was like thin to a pancake. I didn't know how to do mitered corners on binding. So what I kind of did was just made the uh, back a little oversized and then just flipped it over. And that was my binding. I had no idea what how to do binding. Let's see, my quarter inch was more like an eighth of an inch. It was my first quilt. To this very day, I still have it. I mean, it's kind of falling apart still. I still use it and I still love it. And I don't care if it's the ugliest thing in the world. I will always cherish that. And it's a great reminder for me to kind of see how far I've come in my quilting skills as well as my sewing skills and even how far advanced I've become in terms of the types of quilts that I can do. You know, what was your first quilt? Do you still have your first quilt? And do you still look at your first quilt? I mean, it's always interesting to compare where you were, or where you started, and then take a look at to where you are now with on your quilting journey. Now, I understand that a lot of you are just beginning your quilting journey. To tell you the honest truth, I think for most of us that have been quilting for a number of different years, we always remember the first. I mean, there was your first kiss, Mwah. your first partner, your first crush. Mine was a teacher. No. Okay, I'm gonna edit that part out. First time riding on an airplane. First time parallel parking. Uh, first time going on a carnival ride. Well, you get the idea. But you know, you always remember your first of anything. In quilting, it's the first quilt. Again, I still have mine and it's always good to kind of take a look at it and just remember where I started from and where I am now and where I'm heading. Where am I heading? Eh, who knows? But what was your first quilt? Let all of us know. Put a comment down below and let us know if what was your first quilt. Do you still have your first quilt? And are you like me where you think it's the ugliest thing in the world and but you still love it? Put a comment down below. Let us all know. Yeah. I think this combination really is a keeper because it's good. I was a little skeptical with the spinach and the kale, but the orange, yeah, really makes it. Back to sewing. So we have our block, it's all nicely pressed. And the way I pressed the seams, again, I pressed when I sewed the blocks or the squares together, I, sew, I pressed the seam towards the print fabric. When I sewed the rows together, however, you see that I did press the seams open here. And that's just mainly just to deal with the bulk. Now, if you do want to spin the seams at each of these four corners here, you can very well go ahead and do so. I just, in order for, to save time for me, I just press these seams open when I sewed the rows together. But hey, whatever floats your boat. Now, I would like to point out one thing. Uh, as I was sewing this row together, this seam here kind of flipped this way. And so what I did was I took my snips and then just put a little slit right there so I could actually put the seam allowance back to how it was intended to be. So from time to time when things like that happen and if you get your seam for example kind of twisted or if your seam allowance kind of gets twisted like that just take a scissors, take a snip or take your snips Cut a little slit right there, but just make sure you're not cutting too close to the seam. Eh, maybe about an eighth of an inch away is fine. And just, you know, kind of make the seam relax a little bit. Now, 
On this particular nine, disappearing nine patch, your points kinda do matter. Here's why. You see, last week we cut it again, sent down the center vertically and horizontally. This time, we're going to actually cut it diagonally. We're gonna measure from the center about one and a half inches or maybe one inch away from the center line. And so what I'm gonna do, so I'm actually gonna put a line right here. Um, let's see, shall we do one and a half? Yeah, let's do one and a half. No, let's do one inch. So here is my one inch line on the ruler. I'm gonna put that one inch line diagonally on the block and just making sure that it crosses on the point here. It's crossing point here, as well as lining up on the point here. Let me slide it up so you can actually see the lines. Looking at the point here, here, as well as this point here, went off a little bit. Okay, again, that's the one inch line, making sure that it's on all four of these points here. And we cut. Now I have my rotating mat, so I'm just gonna rotate it. Try not to move any of the fabrics or any of the pieces. And we're gonna rotate it. Again, putting my one inch line here, putting it on the point, the corner there, making sure it passes through the seam here, as well as the point there, and right here. Okay, let's cut. boy okay major mistake you see right there yep wasn't paying attention to my cutting went a little bit off but I think I'll be okay because that's still less than a quarter inch we'll see what we started off with was a nine patch and now we got it cut into all these different pieces. So now we swap the block or we swap all of our pieces. No matter how you swap the block or swap the pieces, the center is always going to be the same. So it's all of these surrounding pieces that are just going to be kind of mixed and matched. So have fun swapping all of your pieces together. I mean, see what creations or what combinations you can make. Now, I'm a little sketchy about this, but we're gonna try and make it work. How we're gonna sew this block together is, again, we're gonna sew these three pieces, then we sew these three pieces, and then we'll sew these three pieces. Then we sew the rows together and we got our block. Let's try this. Oh. Okay, that was not a good idea. Well, I'm pretty sure you saw that. What I really should have done was started here on this end because it's kind of flat. And on this particular machine, if I sew with a corner like that, sometimes it grabs the bottom fabric or it pulls on the top on the top fabric or it just picks up on one of the fabrics and it goes miss or it miss kind of shifts the fabric. So yeah, I'm gonna take this off. Rip that out. Come on, Jack, we gotta go to work today. I'm just gonna rip this seam out really quickly. OK, 
Okay, maybe not so quickly. <laughs> okay, so now notice that the fabrics on this one Yep, came out great and it didn't shift. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this back on my cutting mat just to make sure that, do I have it correct? Yes, I do. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing on this one. Now this is my problematic piece and this is the one that I miscut, but I'm gonna just give this a try anyway. So I'm gonna line it up as best I can. Hopefully that's enough to get caught in the scene. That did not work. So here's what I'm gonna do to just salvage it. I'm just going to straighten out that one edge and move on. Okay. There. Let's reset this. And, okay. Let's try it again. See how this looks. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Okay. Now we'll sew this. moment of truth hmm okay this block looks a little funky I know but we'll get this block pressed and we'll square it up because I had that one mishap with I, forget, I think it was this piece that center square didn't quite come out as planned but I'm not gonna sweat that or I'm not really gonna care about that now I am actually gonna go three inches from the center. So here is my three inch line. And I'm just making it match from this point to this point on the center square. Then from three inches outward, I'm gonna trim off all of this. There. Rotate the block. Now, I'm going to kind of eyeball the three inch mark. What I'm doing is I'm lining up the three inch mark here down the center, but instead of trying to match that point, because I know that's off, I'm actually matching line here, making sure that it is straight. Everything else looks good. So I can trim all of this off. There we have a very funky disappearing nine patch. You know, I can still see the nine patch. Maybe I'll call this the almost disappearing nine patch. Hmm. Did I drink it all? Oh, yeah, I guess I did. Okay. So here is my almost disappearing nine patch. <laughs> now, my block ended up being six inches. Now, when I did the math, it's supposed to be six and a half, but because I had that one mishap with the triangle here, yeah, I ended up shrinking the block a little bit, almost half an inch. So 
If you're between six inches or six and a half inches, or maybe even six and a quarter, you're good to go. Again, because of my mishap, I shrunk it down a little bit. Well, I'm still happy with this block. I kind of think it's a pretty cool looking block. Don't you think? Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed making the almost disappearing nine patch. Now, next week we're gonna do one more disappearing nine patch block. But for next week's block, we are gonna be using five inch squares. So if you wanna get a head start, start cutting up your fabric into five inch squares. Well, until then, go out and create something. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications on when I upload the next video. Put a comment down below saying what you liked or maybe even what you didn't like. And join the Facebook discussion group at Treasure Heart Creations. You can post pictures of the blocks that you created or just scroll through and gather inspiration from other Treasure Heart Creation Group members. And from time to time, there are giveaways exclusively for Treasure Heart Creation Group members. So use the link in the description box below to sign up. If you're on Instagram, post pictures of the blocks that you're working on using the hashtag THC5252. Well, that's it for now. Now go out and create something. Thank you.